so hi everyone, my name is Kevin Viegas, and this summer I work with my mentor Daniel P. Vento in analyzing steam leaks using particle image velocity and cost score correlation. So basically the problem that we addressed this summer was the UMD campus steam leaks. So these steam leaks can be found throughout the campus and various locations. And the purpose of the study is to analyze the, the velocity of the steam leaks using uh, video footage primarily. And also, uh, so this could help us better understand how much energy is being lost. And so this strategy of using um, uh, what is a digital PIV technique with the video footage is really useful because we can uh, analyze the particle flow without having to disturb the flow um, with using any instruments. So particle image velocimetry PIB is a measurement used to analyze uh, airflow. And so in a traditional PIB setup, uh, like we have here, uh, we have basically a flow that goes through like a wind tunnel and there's a laser that, that shoots two consecutive shots and there's a camera that takes two consecutive pictures separated by uh, uh, a certain amount of time. And so basically it's taken to post-processing to find the velocity. And so uh, the displacement between the two images is found and that combined with the size of the image and the difference in time between the two images will basically give us the velocity. So that's kind of the background. And then the technique that we used for this uh, project was uh, cross-correlation. And so in MATLAB, there's a command called xcore2, 2D cross-correlation. And basically we took two consecutive frames of a video uh, of, a, of a steam leak, and they're separated by a certain amount of time. And basically we cross-correlated the two images to see uh, what the displacement is, and then use that to find the velocity. So uh, here's an example of, of how that would look like. So we had to divide the image into subsections and then basically perform a cross correlation uh, in each square uh, between the two images so that we could get a displacement value uh, in each of the squares. And then uh, in this example, we have velocity vectors, which basically show us like uh, in what direction the flow is going. So to get started, we needed to do some validation tests. And the reason why is because we need to make sure that the, uh, the way we're uh, calculating the displacements is correct. So we just put in a known displacement and then we calculate what the detected displacement is. And if it's the same thing, then we know it's correct. So we tested it here with the validation and, and it passed the test. So now we moved on to basically using uh, two consecutive frames that are separated uh, by 0 0.01 seconds apart. And so uh, between the first image and the second image, the steam has like an upward movement. So um, we had to separate it into, uh, into a grid of squares because if we take the, the way X squared two works, if we take uh, just a cross correlation of the two images, the average would just be zero because most of the things in the image are not moving. So we had to divide it into little squares and basically do it for each one of the squares. And so we have here 18 by 24 grids. And so after that, we basically calculate the displacement. The red squares uh, are calculated to have no displacement, but the blue squares have an X and Y of displacement change. So basically we take that displacement and the image size of the little square and then the time difference between the first and second image and it gives us a velocity value for that square. Then we take all of the blue square velocity values and average them out. And so we get down here uh, an average velocity of blue squares of 102.2573 in pixels per second. So that would be like our velocity for the steam. And so in conclusion, our findings show us that the tool to accomplish the task of finding the energy is close to being made. And so once we have the average velocity between the two frames, um, what we can do is take a cross, uh, cross section of the cross correlation, use those two values to basically give us a, a path to define the energy output of the steam and watts. And so um, 
And to do that, we have to take the energy of each consecutive uh, between each consecutive pair of frames throughout the entire video. So for future investigation, um, we can perform uh, these cross relations between other frames of the video. And so, um, and we can also find energy and we can examine other videos of steam leaks around the UNB campus, uh, primarily to see if maybe certain areas are more effective than others. And then in that we can, uh, if we do find notable differences, we can let uh, maintenance workers know to basically make a priority list uh, so that they know which leaks need the most attention uh, uh, beforehand so they know um, what um, what kind of schemes uh, they need to measure. So uh, so first and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who permitted me to be a part of the program and who helped me throughout the program. And I want to thank uh, everyone in Trent, all my fellow students. I want to thank Daniel Serrano, Daniel Lathra, my mentor, and also Professor Johan Larson, who helped me out to find the velocity of the steam. And so here are a few references, and, and that's all. Thank you.